Hey guys, thanks for stopping back to Pete's Garage. Now, ready to put the engine in the car, and I've got the transmission mounted. And that was really pretty easy. It's just the mounting plate to the crank, the torque converter, bell housing, and then the gearbox. Pretty simple, no big deal there. Uh, now, if you're doing this job yourself, you have to be extremely careful because this whole assembly could weigh six, seven hundred pounds, and the last thing you want to do is drop and break it, and worse, drop it on yourself and potentially kill yourself. So you have to be very, very safe, which means having good equipment, making sure you're, you're hooked up to a part of the engine with quality bolts, use a four link to make sure you're evenly distributing the weight across the entire assembly, and make sure that your car is jacked up on jack stands and it's on good footing so that nothing moves around. That's number one. Uh, number two, when you're putting it in, be very, very careful. Uh, do make little moves at a time. Don't try and rush and get it in and, and, and just try and jam it in there because you're going to get scratched. You can ruin the engine and ruin all your good work. So take your time. Take your time and always think safety. Don't put your hand or your body in the path of where the engine will be moving or where it might rest. Because I tell you, 600 pounds and your hand is in between, you're going to get crushed. So be, be safe. Now, uh, in order to put this in, there are several things, well, yeah, a few things that have to happen at once. And I want to show you in the car the kind of things that I'm going to have to watch for and hook up for as you put the engine in. And it helps out if you plan it out so that you go in steps and um, do those things in order and then it'll go much smoother. So let's look inside the engine compartment and what we have to watch out for. So I'll be bringing the engine in on an angle and I have to get it down inside there and the first thing will be to get it hooked up to the transmission yoke in the back. I gotta slide the transmission yoke inside the rear of the transmission and then I have to hook up the the, the gear shifter. This gear shifter goes into the transmission. Uh, we have the cable there for the speedometer, the accelerator pedal or the um, linkage for the accelerator pedal has, to, pedal has to go in this hole right here for the accelerator pedal and that's where that goes in there. I have to be careful for that. Uh, it makes it easier to hook up the a wire for the starter that comes from the voltage uh, relay, sorry starter relay, uh, coming around the front. I have to think about the power steering hoses, the fuel line which I have to hook up and keep those all in order then eventually getting to exhaust. One exhaust on one side and the exhaust on the other side, hooking those up and resting the transmission and the holes in the back and resting, then ultimately resting the engine on the front. So let me get it up in the air and start to guide it in there and we'll see how it goes. Okay, this is really slow. Small moves, very slow.
Okay, now I'm close enough where I can hook up my starter. Start to hook up my transmission. I gotta line up the uh, accelerator pedal. Okay, you guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you do this by yourself, it's a wrestling match. It's like wrestling a 600 pound gorilla, and, I, and it won. I tell you, I'm pretty tired. So it took a couple hours to get this thing in there, line up the transmission mounts, the motor mounts, the drive shaft, get it all set up, and get everything all bolted together. Now that it's sitting in place, I can go ahead and start doing my wiring. I'll do my, uh, I gotta take the fan off, so I got the fan shroud in, the cooling system, and the rest of the radiator hoses. Uh, I'll show you what the electrical looks like in case you have the same car, you wanna see what the electrical looks like. And same thing with the ho uh, routing for the uh, cooling hoses. Now before you start, you gotta make sure that you have fuel in the carburetor. And before you get fuel pumped up, from the fuel pump, you gotta fill up the carburetor with the floats. So all you have to do is put some gasoline. Now I'm using an eyedropper, but you can use whatever you want. And just fill the front, the front uh, of the carburetor, the primaries, with some gasoline. You don't need that much, just enough to get it going because the fuel will pump up pretty quick. Okay, my fluids, I checked out my levels. I got uh, oil, make sure I have oil. I have transmission fluid in to make sure I'm not running my torque converter when it's dry. All my wiring is hooked up. Uh, now, this distributor has a Protronics unit in there, so I don't need to run the power through the coil. I don't need this, I'm sorry, I don't need to run it through this resistor on top, but this is here if you had points in the condenser. But the original wiring harness is hooked up here, and there's an extra bypass wire that goes to the positive side of the coil just to make sure that um, I have power to the coil. Um, and the rest of the, well here's the rest of the uh, connections, here's my pressure line that comes off the cylinder head for my oil pressure gauge. Um, I know I have plenty of coolant. I filled up the coolant as much as I could. Um, and power steering fluid, you want to make sure you have that so you're not running that dry. Make sure all your connections are solid with your fuel line. Um, Carburetor is ready to roll. I filled that up. Uh, the rest of the electrical connections are good. Um, my connection here is not really that great for the for the temperature sensor, so I'm going to work on that a little bit. But it should be almost almost ready to fire up. And my uh, starter solenoid, my starter relay, almost ready to roll, almost ready to start. Okay, now everything is ready to run. Now, if you recall. Since I ran it on a dyno number one, reusing the camshaft, lobes are already broken in, breaking in oil, I don't have to go through a break-in procedure right now. But if there was for a fresh engine with a fresh cam and fresh lifters, I'd have to go through a break-in procedure, getting it up to your RPM, letting it run, and breaking in the camshaft. But right now I'm just interested in starting it, making sure it runs, making sure it idles, making sure it heats up. So, everything looks good. Make sure I got gas in there. And we should be good. Okay, so choke close, I'll give it a couple pumps. Just get some gas in there. Alright, now that I have the hood on, and uh, 
I'll show you all the work that we did here. The engine completely rebuilt, obviously you've seen the series on that. Ready to roll, uh, ready to start up. I had to polish the hood because there were some uh, marks on the hood from, it looks like a big, uh, looked like a big spot where sap drew, uh, was dripping from a tree, so the hood, hood is polished. Uh, did some work on the inside here now the radio the radio has been updated the radio has uh, Bluetooth AM FM uh, it's got the uh, USB connection plus an auxiliary input so it's uh, tech, uh, the technology is up there and I also have the uh, microphone mounted on the bottom there which is you can Bluetooth your phone to this radio so it's a Studebaker radio originally but it has all the modern conveniences of electronics and uh, hooking up to your phone so we did all that work uh, the the uh, seats, the springs were redone in the seats, and of course I, uh, I did, which I didn't make a video of, but I put the, the heater core which is underneath the passenger seat, so the passenger gets a little bit of heat here for the, uh, for the uh, it's like a little radiator in there, and that's where the coolant goes underneath the car. Kind of neat. But the car is very clean, the, the owner is ready to pick it up. He's dying to pick it up, because here we are at the beginning of spring, and um, he wants to go for a ride. He's been waiting for this since October. And he's been coming over constantly. Great guy. The owner's a great guy. And uh, the car is in beautiful shape. I've been driving it around. It runs runs awesome. So here, let's uh, let's give her a quick start up. There we go. Starts up. It runs great. Has the um, dual stainless exhaust, which sounds really cool. Of course, dual sta stainless exhaust. Dual exhaust, you can't beat that. Mm. Love the sound of the old horns. Well, there you have it guys. It's all polished up, ready to go back to the owner. He stopped by a little while ago, we took it for a drive, and he absolutely loves it. I kept it to do some final work, a little tune-up work here and there, and uh, polish the paint a little bit more, but he is ecstatic, and I can't wait to give it back to him. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to everybody who's been following this video series, and leaving comments, and emailing me, sending me text messages, talking about the Studebaker, little tips about the engines, and things here and there. It's been a lot of help, I thank you for that. And thank you to all the guys on the Studebaker Driver Club Forum who have been following this thread about this engine rebuild series in the club forum. And you guys, I've been reading all your comments, and I really appreciate all the good ones, good and bad, or positive and negative, however you want to look at it, but they're all learning experiences. I learned from all of them. So I thank you for that. And my new friend, Dave, in Australia, who owns Studebaker Australia, thank you very much for helping me out. It was great talking with you. Uh, maybe we'll make it down there and see you someday. Who knows? You never know. Maybe you come to the United States, you get to see me. In the meantime, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.